Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Wow, that's one large painting that Eric drew in art class. And look, next to it is a tiny clay figure made by Sue. Big or small, they're both wonderful pieces of art, don't you think? And you know, everything around you can be measured not only by their qualitative properties, such as big or small, but also quantitatively by numbers, represented in different ways. If, for instance, the computer that you're using for this lesson can be measured using the length, mass, or volume. And sometimes, measurements need to be converted to make them easier to work with. Let's look at some examples. Lucas has been finding the mass of different objects, and he has the following table set up and needs help filling in the rest. Let's see what we can do to help. Hmm. The table shows different measurements of milligrams, grams, and kilograms. Well, we know that one gram is 1,000 milligrams, and we also know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams. When we go from a smaller unit of measure, like milligrams, to a larger unit, like grams, we need to divide by the conversion factor. In this case, 1,000. So let's do it. 50,000 divided by 1,000. Ooh, that's a lot of zeros. But we can move the decimal place to the left three times when we divide by 1,000, since there are three zeros in 1,000. And we get an answer of 50. Ooh, that's nifty. And now that we have 50 grams, we can divide by 1,000 again to find how many kilograms there are. And here we go. Move the decimal point three more places to the left, and we have five hundredths. So 50,000 milligrams is equivalent to 50 grams, or five hundredths kilograms. Ooh, look, the next value in the table has kilograms. Now when we convert a larger unit into smaller units, we want to multiply by the conversion factor. So, to convert 12 kilograms into grams, we need to multiply by 1,000. And this time we're going to move the decimal point to the right three places. Alright, 12,000 grams. So we can multiply by 1,000 again to find how many milligrams that's equal to. And it's equivalent to 12 million milligrams. Woohoo! And now Lucas can fill out his table. I feel nice and warmed up. What do you say we go help Mia? Smells like lasagna. According to the recipe, Mia needs to bake her lasagna for 75 minutes. That's too long if you ask me. If she puts it into the oven at 425, what time will she need to take it out? Well, we can most certainly help her with this. We know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. And this means that 75 minutes is 1 hour and 15 minutes. So 1 hour after 4.25 is 5.25, and 15 minutes later it'll be 5.40. The lasagna will be ready at 5.40. I'm setting a timer and I'm coming back then. Ooh, and in the meantime, Jenny needs some help getting a costume ready. Jenny was measuring fabric for her Halloween costume, which needed 27 feet of fabric. Now she has four and a third yards. So how much more does she need? Well, before we start this problem, we want to ensure that everything is in the same unit. So let's proceed by changing the yards into feet. Okay, there are three feet in one yard. And so we're going to go from a larger unit to a smaller unit, which means we're going to multiply by three. So four and one third times three, okay. We're gonna start by changing the mixed number to an improper fraction. So three times four is 12 plus one is 13, and our improper fraction is 13 thirds. And now we can multiply that by three. So 13 times 3 is 39, and so 3 times 1 is 3, and 39 thirds, that's an improper fraction. And since a fraction can be read as division, actually, 39 thirds can also be looked at as 39 divided by 3, and that's equal to 13. And so now we figured out that Jenny has 
13 feet of fabric. Now remember, her costume needs 27 feet. So we can take the total amount that she needs and subtract the amount that she already has. 27 minus 13 is equal to 14. All right, Jenny needs 14 more feet of fabric. And I bet if she hurries, she can get to the store, buy the fabric, and get back in time to eat Mia's lasagna with us. Hey, what's Will doing? Looks like he's making a salad to go with his dinner. The salad dressing combines five fluid ounces of vinegar with seven fluid ounces of oil. And if the container he plans to put the dressing in can hold a pint of liquid, will it be big enough for the dressing? Well, first, we need to find out how much dressing Will is going to be making altogether. So 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. Will has 12 fluid ounces of dressing. And now let's see if the container is big enough. All right, one pint is equal to two cups. And there are eight ounces in one cup. And since each cup is eight ounces, then two multiplied by eight is 16. So a pint is equal to 16 ounces. And 16 is greater than 12. So Will's container is large enough to hold all his dressing. Whew. Crisis averted, no vinaigrette's gonna be spilled. We did some great work converting units of measure. We were able to convert smaller units into bigger units by using division. Conversely, we converted larger units into smaller units by multiplying. Ooh, all these mighty math conversions have made me hungry. Oh my, oh my, oh my. And now it's time to check on that lasagna. Is it 540 yet? What do you say we hop on over to the next video lesson?